This week I'll be pollarding my Acacia diabata uh, tree behind me, my mimosa, and also the Eucalyptus gunnii next to it. Okay, so here's my Acacia diabata var alpina or hardy mimosa, and next to it is the Eucalyptus gunnii, which is a very hardy eucalyptus, but as you can see now they're getting quite tall. Uh, they're easily, what, 12 feet tall I would say, something like that. So I do need to cut them down. I need to I do this every year, which I do. So I actually prune them uh, into a pollard, which I'll come on to later, to keep them into a nice short um, growth pattern so that they don't get too large. With all trees and shrubs, it's always best to wait for them to flower before pruning them so that you're not removing all the uh, current year's flowering wood. So my lovely acacia here has been in flower since the uh, end of January, non-stop up until mid-April, which is now. And even though there's flowers all over it, you can see they are starting to fade now. So you can see, look, they are starting to brown off. They've got gorgeous uh, glaucous blue foliage, as you can see. Um, so when I do cut it back, it will produce lots of lovely, fresh, young uh, blue growth. So when I say pruning or pollarding, I mean actually leave, leaving a, a trunk or stem at the base to a height of between 4 feet and 6 feet or between 1.2 to 1.8 metres. So you can see that here it forks. It's because it's been either pruned or the tip's been damaged in the past, so it's actually forked there, which is about 1.2 metres from the base. And then again, further on up the stem, at uh, just over six foot, about seven foot actually, so about two metres or so, 2.1 metres. Uh, from the base you can see it's, I've pruned it here, I've pollarded it, uh, just to take the top off really, to stop it from getting too big. So I will... Uh, do a similar sort of pruning regime now and obviously I will prune all the laterals, the side growths as well. So that's actually pollarding. If I was to copy it I'd be cutting it right at the base and letting it bush out but if I do that here it would take up quite a lot of my garden I think and it would also spread over the lawn nearby. So by leaving a bare stem at the base, pollarding it at the top it means that I do have uh, free space at the base. So next here is the Eucalyptus gunnii. So I'll probably, well I might coppice this one actually, fa fairly low at the base like I have in the past, um, such as like a foot or 30 centimetres from the base. Or then again I could actually pollard this one as well, high up the top, I'll, I'll see. Okay, let's get uh, pruning. So first of all I'm just going to take off a lot of the weight off the branches by pruning the tips back with some secateurs before I actually go in there later on with the saw. Fantastic fragrant yellow flowers. Beautiful. Right, so I've um, I've cut out any dead, diseased or damaged uh, growth, so the 3Ds as it's called in the trade. And uh, now I'm just looking at how much more to reduce the side shoots or the laterals. I know I need to take them back more because there's still flowers on there. Um, so I need to remove all the growth uh, with all flowers on to make sure that I've cut it back enough. 
to keep it within bounds. You can see here, there's still quite a lot of flower there. So I'm going to cut it back probably about here or so, which is a few inches from the, um, the main stem there. So it's important though, when you do any prunings to actually cut to an outward facing uh, branch. So I'm going to cut it to here, just above, about there, so that it will branch from here outwards. So you're looking at sort of creating like a vase shape. Um, so if you can imagine it fairly um, hollow in the centre and then with all the branches um, spreading outwards. Um, so if I prune, like I say, to a shoot which is pointed outwards here and then it will grow from that point outwards. So over onto this one to cut this one to about here like so and then here there's quite a lot of growth here with flowers on um, and if I follow it back to them the stem further on up I need to cut it back quite a bit so if I follow that back if I cut this one to about here I would say so yeah, let's give it a lot more space. This one here, I'm going to cut back to probably there. Maybe, no, maybe there. I've finished pruning my Acacia dilbarta and my Eucalyptus gunnii. So I've pollarded both. And um, you can see that they've got, got a nice open habit now. I've pruned all of the shoots to outward facing uh, shoots and I've also made sure that the pruning cuts are sloping away from the buds to allow the water to run away from the opposite direction to stop water from dripping directly on the new shoots and rotting them. Um, so in a few weeks time uh, that will be full of growth yet again. So I've done the same with the Eucalyptus gunnii. And um, obviously I use these two as a screen to screen off the neighbour's garden and uh, to obviously cover the fence. So um, I'm going to give these a good feed now and uh, a water to encourage new growth. Now that frosts are starting to ease and I'll also be able to paint the fence behind it now to match the rest of the fence that I've been painting um, Forest Oak. So I'm going to scatter some blood fish and bone and organic fertiliser around the base of these now. Um, it says to put f uh, four to five handfuls per square metre around established plants, which I'll do, and then I'll water it in. A handful is 35 grams and uh, I will give it a good soak to make sure it gets to the roots. It's a good idea to feed when you've um, pruned trees and shrubs, obviously, to put the food goodness back in to the new growth. And uh, bloodfish and bone is a good balanced fertiliser, but it does have quite a bit of um, phosphorus for root growth. So the MPK um, is about 393, I believe. Okay, with the acacia and eucalyptus pruned, fed and watered, I'm going to head inside now and take cuttings from the prunings of the acacia. I've got these prunings from the tips of my acacia dilbarta, which I've just pruned, and I'll be using these for cutting material now. So it's always important when taking cuttings to use the tips at the ends of the branches, that's where most of the rooting hormones are. Um, so I've tried this several times and never had success to be honest, so I'm going to obviously not give up and give it another go. Uh, so what I'll be doing, I'll be pruning off, uh, taking off all of the leaves, uh, most of them to cut down on transpiration rate or uh, water loss through the leaves. And I'll also obviously trim below an node. Um, 
that's where obviously the the auxins are the rooting hormones in nodes where the stems uh, join yeah, at forks like so um, and I'll take the cuttings about 10 centimeters long so here's a cutting I've prepared like I say it's about 10 centimeters long you can see I've pruned it just below a node where the auxins will are the naturally occurring rooting hormones I've trimmed off all the lower leaves and I've just left the top ones at the top uh, just so it can photosynthesize or produce food when it's rooting. So I've uh, prepared several cuttings now. I've got six prepared in the same way. I'm going to use this small pot here. It's a nice taupe coloured plastic pot so it can be recycled. Taupe cut colour is obviously recognised by the um, plastic recycling machines and I'm going to use this multi-purpose compost now um, just flip it to the top loose I'm not going to firm it in at this point just nice and loose level it off roughly and then I'm going to insert these cuttings all the way around the base burying as many of these nodes as possible because Cuttings will root, or most cuttings will root from every single node. So the more nodes you uh, cover with compost, the better the root system will be. So, yeah, so six will go all the way along these edges of the pot. So I'm making sure it goes right down to the base of the pot as far as it would go. And that's because when I put it in the heated propagator, it's heated from the base and obviously the, the heat will travel through the pot, the compost and will encourage rooting. I'm just going to give this a good firm, so that there's good contact between the compost and the stems of the cutting. And then I'm going to use my little watering can with a small rose to Give it a good drink, so soak the compost, soak the foliage as well to cut down the transpiration rate and then put it in a humid propagator. What I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to put a bag over the top too, to make sure it doesn't dry out. And so I've got some freezer bags here which I'll use to place over the top. So, keep it hot and humid, no danger of it drying out, and then I'm going to put that into my heated propagator, my Vitapod propagator here. It's heated at 25 degrees, and as you can see, nicely humid, and I'm hoping that these will root within a few weeks. Thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you next week. Bye.